not like my mother. I was this kid, I knew back then, and I was sure you would be the greatest star I'd ever known. I'd watch him walk into a room, and he was never out of place. He knew the answer to every question. The square and cube of every prime, the name to go with every face, like he was king upon a throne. And we had nothing in common, nothing in common. My mother was convinced that I failed English out of spite. We had nothing in common, nothing in common. But thirty some years later, I'm still tortured and amazed by how David always got the answers right. Now later on, I knew this guy. He was in high school, I think. Had lots of friends and was the pride of the family. He'd call me names, he'd punch my head, he'd make me feel like a thing, and I would hide from him all day. But if I couldn't find a friend, which happened more than I'd have liked, I'd go where he was and sulk around him. He'd say, you don't know how to throw, or just don't play your stupid songs. And then he'd toss the ball my way. And we had nothing in common, nothing in common. I thought he was a jerk, and who knows what he thought I'd be. We had nothing in common, nothing in common. But twenty-some years later, I'm still grateful and surprised by the little gifts that David gave to me. I knew this guy before I went. He had a vision in his head of how his life would play out and his dreams would come true. But he was stumbling, he was stalled, and once a year after he called, I'd just think, man, there goes the loneliest guy I ever knew. When people think I'm failing, they never understand the temporary setback are part of what I planned and David had his vision and David played his game we have nothing much in common we are Made a vow, he took her hand, and they lived happily.